Welcome back designers. In today's Adobe Illustrator tutorial, we're going to be looking at the transform tool. In particular, we're going to be creating a vortex style shape to use within an A4 poster design. If you're new to the channel, my name is Richard Carpenter, a web design illustrator. And if you like my videos, please consider subscribing to the channel so you get notified of any future videos. Without further ado, let's jump into Illustrator and get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is create a new A4 size document and then you want to set up the following color swatches so they're accessible within the swatches panel and then you also want to download the following three fonts. The links for the fonts are in the description. Once you've set up the swatches and downloaded the fonts, start off with the ellipse tool and just drag out an ellipse in the center of the artboard. Switch the solid fill to a stroke and then change the stroke color to black. And then you want to increase the stroke weight to around 20 points. And then from within the stroke panel, if you don't see the stroke panel, you can go to window stroke and then press control F10 if you want to use a shortcut. And then from within the stroke panel, you want to select the three dotted lines or the three lines in the corner and go to show options. And what this will do is it will open up and show you some additional options which we can use to manipulate our strokes with. So from within the stroke panel, you want to change the cap to a rounded cap. And then you want to put a little tick in the dashed line box. And the settings for the dash, you want to set to zero points and the gap you want to specify at 40. Also at the very very bottom there's a drop down box for profiles. You select the drop down box and then select the uh, width profile for. And what this will do is it will just make the one side of the stroke thinner and then it will get larger towards the opposite end. Now the dotted line is all sorted what we can do is we can add a transform filter so make sure the ellipse is selected and then go to effect distort and transform and then transform so from within the transform options window this is basically where we create the vortex effect so the first thing you want to do is just make sure transform objects is checked and all the other ones are not checked then for this scale we want to reduce this down to 95 percent and the same for the vertical scale and then the angle we want to change to 20 degrees and obviously you won't see anything happening specifically until we actually increase the amount of copies so if I slowly increase the amount of copies with the arrow keys in the keyboard you can see that it starts to create a vortex style shape so we'll leave that at 40 copies and if you can just have a play around so you can obviously rotate the angle to make different effects and you can also increase the horizontal and vertical scale but the 95% and the 40 copies with the 20 degree angle is what we're looking for today but like I say feel free to have a play about you can get some really interesting effects and then press OK next we just want to lock the ellipse in its place to stop it from moving and then we can work on creating the actual background so select the rectangle tool and then create a rectangle which covers the artboard. Flip the stroke fill over to a solid fill and then select the little gradient button underneath the swatches. And then from within the gradient panel, again if you don't see the gradient panel go to window and then select gradient or you can use the shortcut Control F9. So within the gradient panel what you want to do is select the free form gradient option and what that will do is it will add four swatch points in each one of the corners. So the first thing we want to do is select the top left and then go down to the gradient panel and select the colour picker. So the top left colour we're going to use the lightest purple and then we're going to select the bottom right colour swatch and change that to the lightest purple. For the top right colour swatch we're going to pick the blue and for the bottom left colour swatch we're going to select the pink. Once you've added the gradient, drag the rectangle underneath the vortex shape 
and then just unlock the ellipse from within the layers panel. Reset the ellipse and then convert the solid stroke to a gradient stroke by clicking the little gradient button in the middle. And then the first color we want to use is the pink color. So selecting the color picker, we're going to color pick pink. And then for the second color, we want to color pick the yellow. Once you've added the gradient, hold down the Alt and Shift key and then increase the size of the ellipse so it touches the top of the artboard. And then select the background layer or the background rectangle. Go to Edit, Copy and Edit, Paste in place. While the rectangle is still selected, hold the Shift key and then reselect the ellipse. And then right click and go to Make Clipping Mask. Once the clipping mask has been applied, Head to the transparency panel and then change the blend mode to luminosity and then the opacity to around 50%. Also before we go any further I do just want to let you know that if you do reselect the ellipse and then go to window appearance, select the transform option, we can still make changes to our shape if you wanted to or if you wanted to increase the gap or reduce the gap or even change the stroke weight you can still do all these things while it's within the clipping mask okay so the next thing we want to do is reselect the ellipse tool click anywhere within the artboard and create a new ellipse around 320 pixels by 320 pixels change the stroke fill to a solid fill and then we want to use our darkest purple color Horizontally and vertically center the circle within the artboard. If you do want to make it a little bit bigger, you can do. And we're now ready to start adding some of the text. So the reason we've got a big dark circle in the middle of the poster is because this is where we would typically put the event name. So using the brush script italic font, I've simply added the word party and then I've adjusted the baseline shift on the P to bring it in line with the rest of the characters. And the way you adjust the baseline shift is from within the character panel, select this, the bottom left box, and you can adjust the text up or down, or the letter up or down. And then underneath party in the interstate ultra black font, I've simply added the word night. Obviously positioning the word party above the word night so that the text overlaps nicely. Next, I created another ellipse and used the type on a path tool to simply add text around a circle. And the way you do this is you select your ellipse. It doesn't matter if it's filled or a stroke, but go to the type tool and select the type on a path option. While the ellipse is selected, move the cursor so it touches the path. And then if you just click, then you can simply start typing along the path. You might want to change the font size a little bit. And if you use the direct selection tool, you can actually adjust where the word starts and ends. Once the text has been added along the path, I've simply just vertically and horizontally centered the text on a path ellipse with the ellipse in the center of our poster. Next at the top, I added my logo and the date of the event. Again, just using the Poppins font. And on the date, we just increase the letter spacing just to space it out. This can be done within the character panel. And if you select the tracking option, this will increase or decrease the letter spacing. Towards the bottom of the poster, using the Interstate Ultra Black font, literally just added the event date and the event time. And then underneath, I've just put some example DJs or example acts that would be running at the event. And then I finished off the bottom of the poster with my social media icon and social media handles. And then finally, just to finish off the poster design, I selected the rectangle tool and created a small rectangle. Hold down the Alt key and drag a duplicate copy of the ellipse. Rotate this ellipse and then position it vertically and horizontally center. 
select both shapes then select the direct section tool and using the corner radius handles just round off each rectangle end to make the ends rounded select both shapes again and then go to object group rotate it 45 degrees to turn it into an X and then I've literally just randomly placed these throughout the poster and we can use some white ones as well and perhaps change the size and we just keep duplicating and positioning them around the poster Okay, so there you have it. That's how you create a vortex style shape and use it within a post design in Adobe Illustrator. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing or drop me a like and a comment down below. Your support is very welcome. Till next time, I'll see you all in the next one.